After Spark Podcast, an episode by episode recap of the Generation 1 Transformers cartoon. I'm Elf. And I'm Spex. Today we're going to be talking about episode number 15, A Plague of Insecticons. Let's talk about giant robots today, shall we? Yes. We open in this episode on a tropical island in a mangrove forest where several people are pulling their boats through the forest. It's called the Demon Swamp. That seems racist somehow. <laughs> Well, it might have been the Insecticons that named it that, actually. Uh, I guess. And lo, a giant fucking beetle rises from the water. Saying, welcome to Demon Swamp. Ergo, okay, point taken. Why, why, <laughs> you, why they might have named it that. Yeah. Meet the Insecticons. Cybertronians that are here, now, for some reason. A uh, shrapnel, bombshell, and kickback, who are a stag beetle, a bull weevil, and a grasshopper, respectively. Bombshell is also sometimes listed as a Japanese rhinoceros beetle, interestingly enough. Yeah, we'll probably keep calling him a bull weevil, but I definitely see how it could be a rhinoceros beetle. The people flee, leaving behind several bags of food. That, for some reason, just really looked like fur to me. It was... They did! Yeah. But the Insecticons can eat this. How? And why? Apparently they had to adapt somehow. I don't know. <laughs> and Kickback belly flops onto the one boat the remaining people are fleeing on. And, yeah. The fleeing humans stupidly mention a farm and the Insecticons overhear this and decide to go pay a visit. They don't even finish everything they were eating. They don't. <laughs> I guess it'll be there when they get back for a minute. <laughs> At the Ark, the Autobots get a distress call from Bali about giant robot insects. Skyfire says not to worry. The Skyfire Extermination Service is on its way. Skyfire, why are you so violent now? He just really, really hates bugs, okay? Well, I guess they would make an awful mess smashing against his windshield at the speed of however fast he goes. Yeah, and yeah. Would, would have been a lot more bugs then than there are now. Skyfire then just, like, transforms in the middle of the main room of Autobot headquarters, the, the Teletran 1 room. And everybody just loads up. And by everybody, we mean Spike, Bumblebee, One Charger, and Thrawn. But yeah, you're like, can he just fly out of the arc easily down the hallways in his jet boat? The <laughs> scale in this cartoon makes no goddamn sense. It has some problems. <laughs> it really does. We see Laserbeak returning to the Decepticon base, radioing ahead to Megatron to inform him of the robotic insects. Megatron, Soundwave, and Thundercracker decide to head to Bali, Bali, to track down the Insecticons. Or maybe just to have a nice vacation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, again, I've seen what Megatron has to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. I don't think I'd judge him if he's like, that's it, I'm going to Bali. <laughs> so I guess they get to Bali, and then Soundwave sends out Ravage to track them. And Ravage just sort of hops away following this head. It's so cute. Help! He just kind of bounces. It's so cute. <laughs> they do find a Decepticon escape pod that was apparently launched from the Nemesis before it crash landed on Earth. So yes, this does answer at least one question I had, which was, were there still Decepticons on the darn ship? And so the answer is definitely yes. But this doesn't answer how many Decepticons were on that ship. The world may never know. Mm -hmm. This leads Thundercracker to realize that the giant robot bugs they're tracking are actually Decepticons that gained insect alts instead of vehicle alts. We cut to the Insecticons who found the before-mentioned farm, and they just dive into a field of grain and start chowing down. Oh my god, they're vegans. <laughs> I mean, you never see them eating meat or anything. You it's just, don't, so... Just like metal and... <laughs> Rain and other organic uh, crops. Crops. They eat crops. Okay. So in addition to our Skyfire group, another group of Autobots show up in Bali, this group being composed of Optimus, Sideswipe, Sunstreaker, Wheeljack, Ironhide, and Trailbreaker. They run into a religious celebration prompting them to try to take a shortcut, <laughs> and Sideswipe decides to take the lead going off-roading. You're a fucking Lamborghini, Sideswipe. You do not have enough ground clearance for this. <laughs> at all. At all, at all, at all. And Sunstreaker gives his bro shit, uh, because Sideswipe ultimately leads the group into a dead end. <laughs> Com 
innovate with a size change to full. Wheeljack also makes fun of Sideswipe's poor pathfinding skills. And back to what white Americans thought non-Americans sounded like circa the 1980s. It's pretty racist. It's pretty racist. And yet more people are fleeing the giant vegetarian robot insects. Some poor guy bails out of a combine shouting that he knew they should have sprayed the grass for bugs. Not entirely sure how that would have helped you, good buddy, but I mean... <laughs> hey, maybe, maybe insecticide would have warded off giant metal insects. Who knows? The Autobots show up and exit Skyfire while Skyfire is like half transformed. There's a really weird pause here in the animation. And, and he has legs while everyone just bails out of him. Like, it is so bizarre looking. I love it. Yeah, but I mean, he could legitimately transform his, mm -hmm. his toy like that. So. World 2, I think. <laughs> you could, he could have legs. It was so funny. Yeah. And so a fight ensues as we are introduced to the Insecticon special skills. This is why you buy the toys, kids. Why you buy the toys? <laughs> Including being able to clone themselves for some reason. You gotta have some sort of cannon fodder, I guess, when there's only three of you. I, well, I mean, the Insecticons actually will act as cannon fodder for the remainder of the series for Decepticons, like their clones will. So, I, valid point. They're basically the ve the Viacons of this series. Pretty much. I mean, it was an easy way to explain how the Decepticons would have, like, large numbers, rather than just having a weird variety of ultimately killing seekers. Yeah, this, I almost feel like they should have introduced these guys sooner so that they could do that instead of these seekers we'll never see again. <laughs> yeah. But, eh. I don't know what the writers were thinking, or the artists. It was probably a weird combination of no one was doing a very good <laughs> No job. one was thinking. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, um... Ron thinks these clones are optical illusions until he and Skyfire are thrown into a lake by said clones. Then the Autobots flee into some weirdly large corn, hoping that reinforcements are coming soon. <laughs> it's some really weirdly large corn. It's kind of amazing. Yeah. Now about those reinforcements, Sideswipe's brilliant plan after leading everyone to that dead end was to tunnel their way to their destination. He's really not a smart dude. And yet, that doesn't explain why everyone else here went along with it. <laughs> the Insecticon shoots spikes into the corn, but Wing Charger uses a repulsor field to keep everyone safe. Um, another nod to Wing Charger's weird magnet powers. Yeah. Surprise! The Decepticon tracking party has arrived, and Skyfire can't transform. You had one job, Skyfire. Unfortunately, that job is to be a taxi. Never mind that... You're a scientist, not a warrior, and you've mentioned that in your very first episode. And now you're stuck here with Brawn and Windcharger. Brawn and Windcharger. Against Megatron. You guys are screwed. Well, also Bumblebee and Spike, if I'm remembering okay, properly. Okay, Spike, without uh, being able to steal a gun from somebody who's effectively useless in this fight. And Bumblebee... Bumblebee is uh, supposed to be a spy, obviously. Yeah. Despite <laughs> he's being... a terrible spy, but he's supposed to be a spy. <laughs> despite being a bright yellow, supposed to be a spy. <laughs> right? No one could get their jobs. <laughs> Except the cassettes! Yeah. And Ratchet. And Ratchet! <laughs> I mean, Wheeljack's also good at building things, but they tend to explode, so it's a 50 50. I, 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 I mean the cassettes in Soundwave, okay? Okay. He's just the most competent guy in the Decepticon army. Yes. Okay. Um, also, you should probably sit down, Skyfire. You're significantly taller than that <laughs> weird corn. And then Braun apparently has something against Rumble as he calls him a sawed off nerd, and he's glad he's not with the other Decepticons. So, what do you think Rumble's nerd qualities are exactly? Like, what kind of nerd do you think he is? Video games, weird foreign films, music, maybe Legos. <laughs> I like that. Anyway, this is just making me like Braun less and Rumble more. Oh, you already didn't much like Braun, so it's <laughs> no, but it's uh, it's raising Rumble in my estimation. So the Insecticons don't seem to know who Megatron is. Their conversation basically went as so. Megatron, we're all the same. Insecticons, great. Now help us kill these guys. <laughs> Megatron sees absolutely no downside to this as the Decepticons prepare a fire. And back to our other group of idiots. 
I swear in the previous scene they looked like they were underground, but apparently Sidequipe barely made a dent into digging through this mountain, hill, whatever. I'm guessing that he's just some sort of a wall, considering what I'm going to say next. <laughs> Optimus finishes this tunnel with his chest by ramming through the rest of the rock in truck mode. So obviously it's it not a very thick rock wall, wall or something. <laughs> The other Autobots follow, Sidequip mysteriously turning into a clone of his brother for a few seconds. And they finally arrive to help Skyfire's group, the twins yelling, ramping up a hill, and then transforming into in midair to tackle the Insecticons and Megatron from above. It was obviously the proudest moment of their lives. You know it was. <laughs> Megatron comes up swinging, though, getting Sidequip in an incredibly inappropriate hold, and then chucking him across the field and straight to Skyfire's arms. <laughs> Skyfire's his knight in shining armor. <laughs> he's, he's everybody's knight in shining armor. He is. And then Ironhide pretends to be Ratchet again. Ratchet, I'm assuming, is... Not here. I'm pretty sure he's back at base. He's sir not appearing in this film. Yes. <laughs> well, sir not appearing in this episode, anyway. Yeah. The Autobots attack and the Decepticons take the air and escape. Which seems like an obvious tactical solution for the Decepticons. I mean, look... If they can fly and the Autobots can't, why wouldn't they just be like, all right, this isn't worth our time today? Wheeljack proceeds to fix Skyfire, who takes off to keep an eye on the Decepticons while the rest of the Autobots fall on the ground. The uh, Soundwave notices the idiot following them immediately, and Megatron sends the Insecticons to take care of Skyfire. Skyfire wishes for a laser-powered fly swatter, and the Insecticons call him a booby. <sighs> Harsh words <laughs> from a group of... Robot insects. <laughs> Wheeljack shoots the Insecticons off Skyfire's wing. Actually, I don't remember. Was Wheeljack flying? For Wheeljack was flying. So Wheeljack takes off. He's not wearing a jetpack that we can see, but apparently he can fly. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, Wheeljack shoots the Insecticons off Skyfire's wings and then kick back, kicks him to the ground. Optimus then catches him with this soft metal trailer, which is definitely softer than the ground in every conceivable way. Somehow. <laughs> and at a nearby oil refinery, the Decepticons land amid cries of, The monsters are back! Run! Has, has Megatron hit this place before? Is this from an earlier episode? Should we recognize this place next? Maybe this is where the Insecticons have been going to get... I don't know, their fuel when they're not chowing down on cereal. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're just eating wheat, though. I don't know. So Soundwave does his normal job when he gets to Energon situations like this, and he's the Tupperware man again, as he creates some more empty cubes. And we're just dumping oil into these cubes, and it's magically Energon. Okay. Sounds about right, according to everything else they do. <laughs> Bombshell drops down and uses his override waves. I am making quotation marks <laughs> with my fingers. Um, on Sunstreaker and Sideswipe. Sunstreaker says, hey, somebody else is driving me. I feel like I can make a dirty joke here with, well, almost no effort, really. Yeah, <laughs> zero effort and introducing another fancy reason to buy these toys. And were the toys don't actually do that. <laughs> Just you gotta have a representation of that character that you really love <laughs> that does that thing, and then you can pretend that your other toys are being mind controlled. <laughs> and uh, so Trailbreaker uses his force field to block the override array. Again, more fancy abilities. Why aren't we just shooting bombshell? We'll take his missiles. He used missiles earlier. They seem pretty effective. Because, you know, we gotta remind the kids about the toys' cool abilities. You realize who you're talking to, right? This is the person who has five Megatrons, remember? Clearly I am not inclined to branch out. I guess they're <laughs> appealing to people more like me who have a weird-ass selection. <laughs> I'm a connoisseur, thank you. You specialize. Mine's a bit wider, though I do have two drifts and, like, two rabbits. Ron requests some assistance at getting close to Bombshell, so Optimus just, like, Fucking picks him up and lobs him through the air. <laughs> Ron then lands on Bombshell. This is, you know, the second Decepticon that Ron has written. I mean, first was Soundwave, and it pretty much cemented your dislike of Ron. Yeah, pretty much. We've heard Soundwave, I'm not going to like you very much. 
Rod falls off or is kicked off. It's kind of unclear. <laughs> Who's been caught by Skyfire? Who is basically, as I said, everyone's knight in shining armor. But Skyfire catches him right before he hits the ground. Again, how is this an improvement? That doesn't mean the force of his fall just disappears, you know? That's true. That's very true. You, if you're a human, your inside bits end up splattered against I mean, maybe, maybe robots don't have that same problem, but, but definitely any time they catch the humans. So back at the oil refinery, we see the Decepticons filling yet more tubes, only now rumbled in tow. So, basically, what this means is he was probably in Soundwave's chest compartment all along, meaning that Ron is just wrong about everything today. Yeah, the Insecticons show up. And Megatron tells them to crack open an oil tanker and drink their fill. Okay, so they're not vegetarian, but then why were they eating all that grain earlier? They had a craving. They wanted their cereal. They're chewing bugs, not pregnant women with a craving. <laughs> the Autobots show up and Megatron tells Soundwave to activate the Ravage cassette. What a way to, um, dehumanize is maybe not the right word, to personify depersonify one of your most constant soldiers. But we do get more cute Ravage bounding, which makes me happy. He just bounce, bounce, bounce. <laughs> All the way over to the Autobots. And now it's some speaker that's pretending to be his brother for a shot. In a tussle with Thundercracker, Optimus, Wheeljack, and Brawn end up coming up underneath the pier Thundercracker's standing on and throwing him up and into the oil and water he'd already set ablaze. Thundercracker's just not making good decisions. No. <laughs> And Ironhide manifests fire extinguishers out of his hands and attempts to control the blazing oil around them. And then Shrapnel uses lightning to attack the Autobots, telling them to taste the lightning! Lightning, maybe! Could be the one that hits. Oh, he might. I can't remember. I do love that Wheeljack's response is, it tastes terrible after he gets hit, though. It's a good response. I like it. Good on you, Wheeljack. I like Wheeljack. I love him. I like him. Good fella. But rubber tires save the day as Bumblebee transforms and Shrapnel's attacks have no effect. Oh god. <laughs> That's what makes me think of the thing from the Mars Attacks comics and spiked rubber boots. Oh my god, that part was amazing. <laughs> I love it, because, like, the soldier gives him shit, but then yeah. he's like, ha! <laughs> At the very end, it's great. Uh, this prompts Wheeljack to ride Sunstreaker into battle and shoot Shrapnel with his missiles. And then Optimus rides into battle on top of Ironhide and Trailbreaker. Like a foot on each one, it's kind of great. <laughs> Seeing as the lightning has failed, Megatron shoots the oil tanker, jumps into the water, and then pushes it towards the oil refinery in an effort to blow up the Autobots. Optimus just kind of bear hugs the ship and sort of makes it sting. Megatron takes aim at Spike, and then Optimus pops out of the water, holding the oil tanker above his head. This is really absurd looking because Optimus is like 1 24th the size of this oil tanker or something. He is very small compared to the oil tanker. Right, but then Optimus Prime, leader of the Autobots, chucks an entire oil tanker at Megatron. And the Insecticons proceed to say, fuck this shit, and take off with some Energon. Megatron pops back up, yells to stop them, and then Reflector is here for some reason. He had to get his paycheck somehow. <laughs> anymore, so I'm like, was was Rumble supposed to be Reflector the entire time? Was Reflector supposed to be Rumble? Did Rumble say fuck this shit to hop back inside Soundwave? Could be that. Maybe he went to go do nerd stuff. I'm gonna go with that. Anyway, the Decepticons follow the Insecticons into the air, and the Autobots laugh as this day is saved once again thanks to the Powerpuff Girls. Wait, nope, that's wrong. Anyway, <laughs> see you in a burned episode. Join us next time for the season one finale, Heavy Metal War, where the Constructicons are introduced and Megatron is a cheater to cheater pants. And we don't actually address any of the ecological issues that happened in this episode with all or the oil. Or any of the other terrible things that Megatron and the Decepticons have done that further affected the ec ecology around them. Are you That's not the word I'm looking for. Environment. I'm going to go with environment. All right. Specs. What are our fanfics for today? We have two fanfiction recommendations for today. Our theme for both of them is Insecticons. Um, but so let's go forward with this. 
I will introduce the first one, and then Els can introduce the second one, because it was her recommendation. <laughs> Yay! All right, so the first one is titled Ice Hopper by Angel Cat, and that's Angel with a Y. It'll be spelled for you. So it's in the G1 continuity. It's rated G. Uh, it's rated, it's gen. There aren't any pairings. It's just a cute little short thing. So characters are shrapnel, bombshell, and kickback. And so the author's summary is another fic I wrote a while back, which I've called from an obscure place. The time of year seems appropriate. I confess to it being a favorite besides which insect accounts need love. And so this is actually set during the winter. The winter or? Yes, it's set during the winter. Ah. Originally written for the TF underscore speed writing with the prompt Snow White and summary summary is Kickback has fun in the snow which does not provide quite so much fun to fellow insecticons. And there's a warning for extreme insectophilia <laughs> with a smiley face. And so yeah, recommendation the theme or here whatever is insecticons. Lots of insecticon cuteness. <laughs> And my recommendation for today is Unusual Subjects to Take Up in Therapy by Sparkbug. Continuity for this is Shattered Glass, which is one of my favorite continuities ever. Um, and I just happened to remember that the Shattered Glass bombshell was in this and recommended it for it. The rating is G. The, it is Jen. There are no pairings, though I will admit I feel like it gets some cliff jumper uh, bombshell vibes in this, but um, that it's not listed that way. Characters are regular universe cliff jumper. Shattered Glass Bombshell, Shattered Glass Starscream, Shattered Glass Sideswipe, and Shattered Glass Megatron. Summary. After Megatron expresses concern over how Cliffjumper is handling his new situation and Cliffjumper insists he's doing fine, he still ends up talking to Bombshell about alternates, the differences between his native reality and this one, and the people in it, and just a little about how he's dealing with it, at first reluctantly and later less so. The theme for this was Bombshell, basically, since you know, he's an insecticon. Some background on the Shattered Glass universe and the plot and the main Shattered Glass stuff is that the normal cliff jumper actually ends up there and ends up allying himself with the Shattered Glass Decepticons, who are the good guys in this universe. Mm -hmm. I quite like this fic. I want to say it's like five or six chapters long, but it is complete. Um, and I just enjoy getting to read anything with Shattered Glass in it, but I thought the characterizations in this were good, and we don't actually get to see a ton of Shattered Glass bombshell material, so it was interesting. And we've got fan art today. We do. So our fan artist for today is Red or Russet Red. I'm not entirely sure which one they go by. We will have additional links to their stuff on our Tumblr, but the stuff that we will list on at least AO3 is that Russet Red has a Tumblr, a Twitter, and an Instagram. They tend to do a lot of IDW stuff, so I think there's probably more stuff on there too. There is a variety of characters. Uh, the IDW continuity, as far as I can tell, some really cute stuff ranging from sprite art to sketches and finished pieces. They have my, my undying gratitude for making adorable Cosway fluff. Yes. <laughs> uh, our three art recommendations for the day are a sleepy ambulance, which is ratchet related, a Cosway sprite they did, which is super cute, and then some minimus fan art where he's holding a bunch of flowers that I just thought was cute. Sounds adorable. I really recommend them. Their art style is pretty damn fucking cute. <laughs> okay, and so that just about wraps it up for us today. Remember to check us out on Tumblr or Pillowfort at afterspark-podcast for any additional information, show notes, or links we may have mentioned. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter at AfterSparkPod, all one word, and various other locations by searching for AfterSpark Podcast, such as AO3, iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and YouTube, just to name a few. Till next time, I'm Specs. And I'm Els. Toodles.